Hello, Challenge B students. I'm going to be working through these appendixes. Um, there's A, B, and C that you are supposed to complete over Christmas break, 25 copies, and I'm just going to run through how you're going to write this and how you're going to say this, because if you say these out loud, you're going to get used to how you're going to be using them next semester. So we're going to start with Appendix A, and these are just our five different types of operations that we can do. Um, very similar to math operations. So for your negation operation, P can either be true or false. Those are the only two options. If we're going to negate the P, then a negated P, if it's true, becomes false. And if it was false, becomes true. It's just the opposite. For a conjunction, think of this like multiplying. So your P can be true, true, false, or false. Now we want to get every combination. So we'll have true, false, true, false for our Q. So if P is true and Q is true, then it's both true. If P is true and Q is false, then the conjunction is false. If P is false and Q is true, the conjunction is false. And if P is false and the Q is false, the conjunction is false. So your key statement is this one right here. If you can memorize, they both have to be true in order to get a true conjunction, everything else is false. Our next one is disjunction. This is your or symbol. So P or Q. All right, so P again can be true, true, false, false, and we want all the combinations here. So Q can be true or false for true, and it can be true or false for false. So if we have P is true and Q is true, then the disjunction is going to be true because this is like or. One or the other has to be true in order for the whole thing to be true versus on conjunction. Both have to be true for the whole thing to be true. So if P is true and Q is false, that's still true. If P is false and Q is true, that's still true. If P is false and Q is false, now it's false. So this right here is the one you want to memorize. If they're both false, then the disjunction is false. Otherwise, it's always true. Next, we're going to go on to the conditional. This is your if-then statement. This only matters, it only applies if P is true, okay? So um, you for P, you've got true, true, false, false for your options, and true, false, true, false for Q, just like on the other ones. We want every combination. If P is true and Q is true, then your disjunction is true. That's what it should be. If P is true and, your di and Q is false, then your conditional is true false okay and that's because we're this conditional is making a promise i'm promising if t if if the antecedent is true that the consequent will be true okay so if the antecedent is true and the con the um consequent is false then that is dis is um like disproving what i'm saying so that makes it false however i made no claims if p is false i just said if p is true Q has to be true. If P is false, I don't even care what Q is because I didn't make any claims for if P was false. So this is going to be true. And again, if P is false, I don't care what Q is because I didn't make any claims on what it could be. So this one's also true. So what you want to memorize here is the second one. If the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, that is the only time a conditional is false. Now, this is your biconditional and you have your three lines. P, if and only if Q. Okay, so P can be true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false for Q. Um, so if P is true and Q is true, then they're both true. If P is true and Q is false, then it's false. If P is false and Q is true, it's false. And if P is false and Q is false, then it's true. So you've got two statements here you want to memorize. On the biconditional, it's important that they match, okay? So if they're both true, it's true. If they're both false, it's true because we want these to match. They, they equal each other, but they only equal each other. So that's what you're going to want to kind of think through for your Appendix A. Now, your Appendix B, the second one we're going to use in class and learn is um, on the backside. So I'm just going to walk through how you can say these as you're writing this down. This is the modus ponens rule, and this states that, all right, if I have P, therefore I have Q, because that's what this rule says. If I, if P, then Q, okay? So I have P, therefore I have Q. Now, modus tollens is the opposite, but I'm going to say not Q. I don't have Q, therefore not P. I don't have P either. Now, hypothetical syllogism uses the same rule. If P, then Q. Now we're going to add another statement to this. If Q, then R. 
Therefore, it's now reasonable to assume if we have P, then we have R. So if P, then R. We just cut out this middle man and are connecting the first two together. Disjunctive syllogism. We're moving on to your disjunction now. P or Q is this rule. Not P. So I don't have P. Therefore, Q. I have to have one or the other. Since I don't have P, I do have Q. Okay, conjunction. We're going to put these together now. I have P. I also have Q. Therefore, it's reasonable to assume I have P and Q. So I can just stick those together. Okay, constructive dilemma. This one, we're going to use some parentheses. If P, then Q. And if R, then S. I have, because of my and, let's see. I have either P or R. Therefore, I have either their consequence, Q or S. Okay, so if I have one of the antecedents, then I have one of the consequence. Simplification. So this is for if you already have a conjunction statement and you need to get a letter by itself. P and Q. Therefore, P. I have just P then. If I have both, it's reasonable to assume then I just have P. Okay, absorption. If P, then Q. Therefore, it's reasonable to assume if I have P, then I actually have P and Q. And this is kind of a play off of this of um, the simplification. If I have both of them, then I have just this one. And so it's kind of reversing, reversing that. All right, finally, you have your addition. P, I know I have P. Therefore, I have P or Q. I can add a letter in there because I know I only have to have one of those for it to be true. And I know I have P, so it's true. Okay, now we're going to go down to some more complicated laws here. Basically, each of these biconditional signs just say that what you have on the left equals what you have on the right, and you can switch them out in your homework. If you have this written in your homework, I can actually switch and put this in for place of it, and it means the exact same thing. So you'll notice the words are written here to the side, so here's how we're going to do this. Not P and Q, if and only if, not P or not Q. Not P or Q, if and only if, not P and not Q. Commutation now. P or Q, if and only if, Q or P. P and Q, if and only if, Q and P. So we can just reverse those placements. This should remind you of a math law you learned in foundations. Now, association. We got big brackets here. P or Q or R. Close up those brackets. If and only if. P or Q or R. So we can just move those parentheses, just like in math. Um, bottom line of this. P and Q and R. If and only if. P and Q and R. Okay, distribution. Again, this should remind you of a math rule you learned in foundations. P and Q or R, if and only if, P and Q or P and R. Okay, so we're distributing that P into the parentheses. Again, this works with disjunction, so P or Q and R, if and only if, P or Q and P or R. Okay, double negation. P, if and only if, not, not P. Double negation here. Two nots cancel each other out. Okay, transposition. If P, then Q, if and only if, if not Q, then not P. And this is just a rewriting of your rule up here of modus tonens and modus ponens. Okay, material implication. If P, then Q. If and only if. Not P or Q. Material equivalence. P, if and only if Q. If and only if. If P, then Q, 
and if Q, then P. And then P, if and only if Q, if and only if P and Q, or not P and not Q. Okay, so remember, you're substituting this whole section inside the parentheses for this whole section inside the brackets if you're going to be using these rules. Okay, exportation. So this is if P and Q, then R. If and only if, if P, then if Q, then R. Finally, your tautology, P, if and only if, P or P, P, if and only if, P and P. So we can substitute any of those. So anytime you see this biconditional in the middle of it, we can substitute what's on one side for the other side. Okay, finally, we're going to go back over here to chart appendix C. And we're going to um, copy out these truth tree decomposition rules. This will be the, the thing you learn towards the end of next semester. So um, every time we come down here, we're either going to have a single branch on the tree or a double branch. Okay, so that's what these, branch, these lines that um, arrow out are for. So double negation, we already learned what that is. That's not, not P. Not, not P. I decompose that by saying, well, I have P. Done. Okay. So that is the same thing we just learned from the previous page. Conjunction, P and Q. Well, I have P and I have Q. Done. Decompose that, which means I broke it down into its smallest parts. Disjunction, P or Q. This one, I have two options. I have P or I have Q. We have two separate trees that we'll work with now. Done. Conditional. If P, then Q. This one's also going to branch out. I either have not P or I have Q. Done. Negated conjunction. Not both P and Q. So I'm going to branch. I either have not P or I have not Q. Done. Negated disjunction. Not both P or Q. Therefore, I have not P and not Q. We're not branching here. You have both of them. Done. Negated conditional. Not if P then Q. So I have P and not Q. Done. Biconditional. P if and only if Q. I have two branches here. I can either have P and have Q or I have not P and I have not Q. Done. Negated by conditional. Not P if and only if Q. I have two branches. I have P and not Q, or not P and I have Q. Done. Okay, I hope you enjoy. You get your charts copied 25 times and practice saying these rules in your head so that you understand what the operators and the symbols mean. Have a good Christmas break. If you enjoy, you get your charts copied 25 times and practice saying these rules in your head so that you understand what the operators and the symbols mean. Have a good Christmas break. If you enjoy, you get your charts copied 25 times and practice saying these rules in your head so that you understand what the operators and the symbols mean. Have a good Christmas break.